everybody. We've got another uh, Culture Hour taping for you today. My name is Shelly Smith, owner of Premier Rapport. I'm Elizabeth Valise, VP of HR. So we are excited today. Today we've got two topics on our mind. Um, each of us had something and we couldn't decide, so we decided to throw both of them at you. So one is an article that uh, Elizabeth actually shared on LinkedIn about HR, and we'll say HR friend or foe. We kind of changed the title a little bit. And then I've got turnover on my mind today and the difference of views of what human capital is. So, but let's start with HR friend or foe. Elizabeth, you were fired up about that article. So why don't you tell the audience in case they haven't read it. Uh, number one, they can go back to your LinkedIn page, but mm -hmm. tell them what was in it and what fired you up and, and give them the yin and the yang of it. So there was this article that I posted on LinkedIn uh, about HR is not your friend and here's why. Um, it fired me up because the article really, I almost felt like it, it focused so much on what HR doesn't do for organizations and for people. And it really ran through kind of a litany associated to the to the Me Too movement, right? That, that we previously talked about in one of our tapings. And it, it talked about, well, HR failed here and HR didn't do this here. And this is the reason why. And, you know, we've talked about the lack of courage. Um, I think we've also talked about the lack of support from leadership. But what I don't want to escape people's minds is all the good things that HR people do. You know, I... I'm going to tell you, being in human resources is probably one of the hardest jobs in a company. You are basically the social worker for the company. That, that's, you're the group therapist, you're the social worker, you, you deal with all things, here comes the F word, feelings, right? And, yeah. and a lot of leaders I have found in organizations shy away from, well, people shouldn't have feelings in the workforce. People. They're not robots, they're people, they're human beings. They have emotions, they have feelings, they have baggage. Some of them it's a small little carry-on, others it's a full on suite of hard tape Samsonite luggage. You have to deal with it. I've, <laughs> I've seen HR, I know, I, I can tell you right now, I know an HR person who talked an employee out of committing suicide, okay? I know an HR person who helped an employee get out of a domestic abuse situation. I know an HR person who was side by side with someone after they lost a, 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 someone close in their family. So yes, do, are there mistakes? Absolutely, no one is perfect. And I just, I don't want people to look at that article and say HR is failing across the board. Yeah. We're not, we're doing great things. I mean, do you disagree with that? Uh, you're very inspiring, and that's all you do. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that's so archaic, whether you're a one-person show or whether you're, you know, a staff of 100. It's either way, it's the mentality of, of, of hiring and firing, and that's all you guys do. And, and then you're unhappy with how we do it. Well, maybe if we were given the opportunity to really show what we're capable of doing, and let's call it what it is. If we had a shift from profit and all we care about is profit and all we care about is profit and all we care about is profit to let's start caring about our people and profit becomes the natural byproduct of that focus on our people. I'm sorry, perhaps we wouldn't have these problems that everybody thinks HR is failing at resolving, well, which and is a nice segue into perfect yes, right. It's a perfect segue into it. Somebody asked me um, recently my views on human capital. So the the what is the overall you know description and view on it? What's the hiring practices around it? What are the retention practices around it? And so as I've begun to try to articulate articulate that and and put it into a blog of the old, the new, the perceptions, good and the bad. You know, immediately it was a column of the view that human capital is an expense. Um, it is simply the labor force, hence your comment that there, there isn't any profit-ridden piece versus the, uh, the companies that have the mindset that human capital is the investment. 
because how we treat an investment is very different than how we treat an expense. Something that's a cost and expense, you write the check, you write it off. And, and that meaning the payroll check every week and it's written off and it's a line item expense versus an investment that you nurture, that you keep your eyes on, that you, you know, you love, you, you love, you rub, you not rub in a bad way, but <laughs> you, you, um, you help it, you caress it in the mental uh, capacity with the career development piece. I've posted a lot lately about the career development and that is all about the retention. So you're right, you can't get out of HR as hiring and firing and is it friend or foe if you haven't made the mental shift and really believe in it that human capital is an investment not an expense it just i'm ah, it, as much as it gets you boiled it boils me beyond belief you know this week i've had or this past week rather i had quite a few phone calls and emails around uh turnover and the turnover was you've got to help you know the turnover stop for a couple of business owners that have less than 10 on their staff, but they're close to 5 million in revenue. So it's not, you know, rinky dink deals. So when they lose a person, I mean, that's a huge devastation to that small business and ha excuse me. So the conversation was around, you know, how do you stop it? Just as much as really large companies such as yourself, profit or nonprofit that have really large departments, when you lose a body, it's devastating. You know, you, you have holes that, that can't be repaired. You know, I've got all kinds of ideas and I know you do too, but what are you seeing when you sit around the table and talk about human capital? Is it still very much an expense or are you starting to see the shift into, no, 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 it's an investment or even how do we get that shift that it's an investment? Well, I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, it depends on the senior leadership team. You know, I am extraordinarily folk, uh, fortunate to be surrounded by folks uh, in, in my current position that it's, I'll be honest, they don't look at it as an expense or an investment. They look at it as the singular point of whether or not we will succeed or fail is through our people, which is amazing, right? But I come from another company where they treat their people like commodities. Yeah. It really is. Um, what What's that saying? Uh, the, the fish rots at the head, yeah. right? It really is about the tone that the senior most person in that organization sets. So to answer your question, if the CEO doesn't believe it, there isn't a darn thing anybody in that company is going to be able to do short of figuring out a way to get rid of the CEO. Right. to drive a culture of people before profit yep service <laughs> before self well and what's interesting is when a company is having i heard this last night on the news um claire the jewelry stores in the mall you know uh that they are filing bankruptcy and the very first uh piece is they're going to survive and thrive because they're going to do a an organizational restructure of its power of its manpower i was like why is it that we immediately say when when the profits are bad oh let's cut people because it's usually it is the business expense i get that it's a big biggest expense it's your biggest investment and it's the biggest thing that will make or break a company so again until we get out of that mentality of, oh, let's just cut, instead of let's cut, maybe you need to stop, slow down, clarify the job expectations so you know who in the world to hire, and then, oh, here's a novel concept, when we onboard them, how about we're very clear about what success looks like? I, so many conversations when I say, what makes this person in this role and this company successful, people are like, well, if you don't know, do you think your employee knows? Well, but that's Shelly, crazy. it's in their job description. It's in their job. Really? No, it's not. No, that's, <laughs> but that's, but that's, that's a lot of the common, uh, the common thread that we hear, right, in HR yeah. when we're trying to coach uh, leaders in organizations is, yeah. well, <laughs> we gave them their, they signed their job description. They should absolutely know what's expected of them. I think overall, um, I'm reading this great book uh, on Audible, uh, The Best Team Wins by Adrian uh, Gostick and Chester Olson. My boys, um, shout out to you. Um, and it is an extraordinary book, extraordinary book. And the theme that
that's coming out of there is that a lot of the stuff that they're talking about is basics. I think that sometimes people run at such a high speed, right? That yes. they forget the basics. They forget about setting goals and setting expectations. And by the way, for those of you wondering, yes, those are two different things. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying um, about having, you know, frequent touch points, one-on-one -on -one talk about progress. Um, Kester and Adrian talk about aspiration meeting outside of your one-on-ones yeah. where you talk about, hey, um, what do you aspire to do? What do you need? What are the skills, education, projects that you need to work on to get there? But we're not having those conversations up front. And then what happens is on the back end, when people are not performing, yeah. the manager gets themselves all worked up and quite frankly, pissed off. Yeah. And my first question is, so is there a document somewhere, just saying, that yeah. the yeah. two of you came up with that well, you agree yeah, on? Oh, we, it's been on our list to update the job descriptions. It's been on our list to, yeah. um, to really get a fun onboarding process. <laughs> So I don't have time. To, I don't have time, Elizabeth. Yeah. I don't have time. Let yeah. me be clear. Let me be clear to the folks who are crazy enough to follow the two of us, right? <laughs> you cannot afford not to have the time to spend with your people. Yeah. I don't care if you are the CEO, that whatever C is next to your name, I don't care if you're a VP. I don't care if you're a director, I don't care if you're a manager. If you are responsible for another living, breathing human being in your organization, you cannot afford not to do these basic things on the front end, yeah. the basic things consistently, and you are going to be like mind blown at what your results are gonna be because you're either gonna manage people to the level of performance that you expect, or you're gonna manage them to not be in the role that they're in, whether it's with the organization, with outside of the organization. But at the end of the day, it becomes a win, 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 win situation all around. And there don't, there don't have to be losers in this equation. And I think that's, that's the part oh, that people oh, are having to do. We cause our own war on talent. That That's yeah. probably the funniest thing when people started talking about that. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. The war on talent is inside your, your company. It's self-inflicted. It what your competitors are doing. How about, you know, you look inside the company first. Well, yeah. we, we can keep going on on both sides. Um, so you can tell we're, we're a little hot under the collar uh, for both of those things, but <laughs> um, they, they definitely go hand in hand. So in closing, you know, you, you know that your culture matters. If you don't, you definitely should. Your people are your most valuable asset and you just can't talk about it. You actually have to live it. You know, we talk about building relationships when it comes to customers and sales. I just don't understand why that concept isn't done through normal with your staff. Your staff is your customers. If you're, if you're screaming at your sales team and your business development and, and everything that's on your website and all of your sales funnels is about customer relationships. Hello. What about the relationship with the people that are working for you? They are your, your investment at any rate. We thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to send us your questions because if not, we pick up whatever the heck we want to talk about. <laughs> whatever awesome. in the news. And um, if any of you are watching who actually work for Claire's, I'm so sorry that I use you as an example, but the reality is um, it's far more than, um, it is the people that weigh you down, but it's the people and how you're treating them that weigh you down. It's their inefficiencies and, and, everything around that. So um, until next time, have a great, productive, people talking, engaging relationship involvement day. My name is Shelly Smith with Premier Rapport, Culture Matters. Elizabeth Valise, yes, it does matter.